안녕하세요 여러분 반갑습니다 선현우입니다 하이 안녕하세요 네 여러분 잘 들리시죠 잘 보이시죠 please let me know first things first if you can hear me well if you can see me well please do know do let me know in the chat by typing 잘 들려요 or I can hear you well things like that so today we're going to be um, practicing real life Korean conversations using our book real life Korean conversations intermediate so here is what I'm going to be using as the typing screen as usual all right so okay some people are watching while working that's good too I mean good for me good for you maybe not so good with your boss I don't know <laughs> but thanks for joining and today the topic is improve your Korean through realistic dialogues and um, when you learn Korean when you learn any language dialogues are going to be really important sample sentences we can't emphasize the importance of sample sentences enough and also you know examples not just sentences per se but examples surrounding the words that you are learning like whenever you learn a new word you don't want to just memorize that word alone right so hello everyone welcome back to the class we're going to be talking about improving your korean through realistic dialogues so basically what dialogues are um, but they are, you know, sample sentences stacked up together in one consistent context, right? So they're going to be more interesting than just single sentences. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be using a real uh, dialogue from our book, Realistic Korean Conversations. You can see the cover over here. Let me do some greetings. Um, thanks everyone for being early. And a lot of you were actually waiting before the class began and Sana Bigum was the first person that I saw um, who was here saying hello. And Irahi, 안녕하세요. Hello, Angelica, Lisi, 그 다음에 김남형 Tomboy Army, hello. Pink Flamingo, Alexandra, Frances, Michelle, I think, and uh, Glenda, Alice, um, Film 42 TV from Wales, 그리고 Somia, 안녕하세요. Hello everyone. All right, I'm doing well. I hope you are all doing great. And Novia says, um, 안녕하세요. 저는 처음 들어온 학생이에요. Especially since you are new here, let me actually just highlight your comment. What I he do here usually is whenever I get a question like this one, um, I try to take a screenshot and share it with everybody by putting it over here so that you can see you can of course do the you know chat replay thing but you can see everything here so that you know what I'm talking about so 안녕하세요 저는 처음 들어온 학생이에요 오 한국어 공부 좀 오래 하셨나 봐요 I think it looks like you have studied Korean for a while because this sentence structure is very very natural 저는 처음 들어온 학생이에요. 저는 학생이에요. Let me go from the shortest version and expand the sentence to the current format. 저는 학생이에요. 저는 들어온 학생이에요. I'm a student who came in. 저는 처음 들어온 학생이에요. I'm a student who came in for the first time. And in English, you would say other things like in, in a different structure. I'm here for the first time and you wouldn't say like so and so 학생이에요. But yeah, that was a very, very natural Korean sentence. 아주 좋아요. 잘 쓰셨어요. And we also see some people joining our membership on YouTube. We do have a membership. You can click on the join button next to the subscribe button here on YouTube. You can see um, our member only content and also member only community posts. We actually posted a video in Korean with English and Korean subtitles uh, about Teacher's Day. We celebrated Teacher's Day um, in our own way, our little way, and uh, we took some pictures. So there's a small video about that. Okay, um, a lot of people are joining from um, New Zealand, Austra Australia, the Philippines, 그리고 어, 한국어 학자예요 라고 하시는 분도 있었고 오, oh, okay. So let me um, actually share another comment here. Whenever I see, you know, as, a, as an instructor, as a teacher, whenever I see a good sentence, a well-written, well-constructed sentence by a learner, I'm actually very excited and I can't wait to share the good sentence 
you know, as good examples with other learners. 저는 라이브 두어, 라이브 수업 듣는 거 처음이에요. 저는 라이브 수업. 라이브 수업 is a live class, right? And 듣다 is to listen or hear. But when you say 수업, class, with the verb 듣다, to listen, you listen to, you sit through the class, you take a lesson, take a class. So 수업 듣는 거. 듣는, 듣는 거 is the noun form of the verb 듣다. So 듣는 거 is like the act of taking a class. 처음이에요. 오, 오늘 처음이에요. 오늘 처음 오셨어요. Welcome. 어서 오세요. 환영합니다. 어서 오세요. 환영합니다. Some formal sounding greetings like 어서 오세요 and 환영합니다 both mean welcome. So welcome to the class. 오늘 수업 도움이 많이 될 거예요. Okay. And thank you Michelle and um, another person I saw, uh, Camilla and some other people. Thank you for joining our membership too. All right, um, so um, Amir asks, can I please use colors to identify different parts on the sentences? I would like to, but uh, it, it'll take some more time, but let me try. And if it's a little bit of a hassle, I will just, um, you know, put it in bold and underline it. But, okay, 그러면 오늘의 수업을 시작할게요. So today's class is based on our book, the same cover that you see over here. Uh, the light is very bright. Real Life Korean Conversations Intermediate. It's a thick book. It's a big book. This is our um, beginner level book. Let me, it's a bit bright. I'm sorry. But yeah, this is the first book and the second book. And this one has 40 everyday situations and conversations. And the beginner book introduces mainly 800 vocabulary words and all the vocabulary words are going to be like i said in like sample sentences but you know the sample sentences are also woven into dialogues that are easy to remember easy to follow and this one is not very different in format this one has 30 different everyday situations it's not like only 30 because the conversations you're gonna see today's conversation the conversations are actually quite long, not too long, but reasonably long, you know, enough for you to study with like on one day or even two days. And it also introduces 900 new Korean vocabulary words and 90 grammar patterns and 180 more variations. So you're going to see what I mean. And let me actually show you the inside and start studying with you. So the first page that we I want to look at is this um, table of contents page. 목차, 목차를 볼게요. 목차. Table of contents in Korean is uh, 목차. I will be going back and forth between the, uh, the writing document and the, the write document screen, or let's, let's call it a whiteboard, and then the book content screen. And if I forget to switch between the screens and I'm typing while you see this, please let me know. So, 목차 is table of contents. 목차. So, whenever you see um, table of contents for uh, courses, you know, we have a lot of courses and we have a table of contents section for every of uh, every one of our course courses, right? So, that's 목차. And then, um, yep, over here. Then, so on this 목차 page, you see that we have dialogues related to self-introductions, can you see everything? Exchanging phone numbers between people. How are you? You know, asking about each other, plans, to dinner, wedding, coming home, waking up. And dialogue eight, waking up, on starting on page 98, is actually going to be today's study material. So it's going to be a really realistic dialogue between, a conversation between three family members. So you will see. And you can also study with a dialogue that happens in a clothing store, 옷가게, 옷가게, and shoe store, 옷가게. For beginners, 옷, 옷 is, you know, many people say this is a cute looking letter or word because it does look like a person, you know, kind of walking to the side, you know, doing a sidewalk, crab walk kind of thing. So yeah, 
you can remember, remember it like that, otkage, but otkage, clothing store, and then shoe store, shinbalkage, furniture store. So this is in the grand category of shopping. Cosmetics store, 화장품 가게, and blind date, movie date, and at the park. Okay, and then we have another page full of conversations. This is the next page in the table of contents. One second. Yep, over here. Um, rejection at work, or this is that in the dating category. Overtime at work. Um, meeting, company dinner, class, exam, restaurant, 식당, cooking, 요리, ordering delivery, uh, 배달 음식, 그리고 pharmacy, 약국, hospital, 병원, not feeling well, 몸이 아플 때, taxi, 택시, subway, 지하철, airplane, 비행기. So these are the situations that we will be taking a look at and let's study with this one. So here, Mm, yep. Here, 저 내일 여섯 시에 깨워 주세요. Let me actually show you the inside of the book, page ninety-eight. Sorry, I dropped my book. <laughs> 네, 이거예요. 이거 보이세요? Avoid the light. Avoid the light. Yeah. 내일 여섯 시에 깨워 주세요. Here. Uh, please wake me up at six o'clock tomorrow. So imagine a situation where you are asking your, you know, parents or your, you know, family members to wake you up at, you know, an early hour tomorrow. And let's look at the conversation. This is what it looks like. So let's go right here. And as usual, um, I told you before, and if you've joined my live classes, you are um, familiar with that. If you have a question, please feel free to drop your question in the chat. I will I will come back to your question later and try to answer them. You know, toward the end of the live class, I will try to answer as many questions as possible. And this class is based on our book this time, this book. So if you want to take a look at more information about the book, if you want to look at our other books, please follow the link in the description below and take a look around our website and you can also see our online courses and various types of materials that we offer. So yeah, please visit us at our website at talktomeinkorean.com. So this is the situation. Look at the picture here. So this guy is going to bed over here and the mom and the, this guy's sister, the three of them are talking. Right? So he's probably asking his mom to wake him up early in the morning tomorrow because he has to go somewhere. Okay, so far so good. Right? And let's look at the first lines. 처음부터 볼게요. Um, if there are difficult words, I will try to explain. And as we go along, if there are certain parts that you want to know more about, please leave a comment in the chat. 책 속의 그림이 진짜 예뻐요? 감사합니다. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, let me actually... Before reading the lines, let me see if there are questions that I want to highlight and answer later. Let me quickly scroll through everything. Thank you for all the um, greetings that I didn't get to see earlier. Nati, Bava, 그 다음에 음, 아무르스, 음가, 그리고 uh -huh. Okay, let me highlight some questions over here. Some questions and some comments, okay? 그 다음에, oh, I like this comment. Anything that's a compliment about me personally, um, I, I, I like to highlight it. <laughs> 그 다음에, um, what else? Oh, yeah, Sunny something says, I saw you on GMA Good Morning America a few days ago. Thank you. Yeah, it was, uh, it was an interesting experience for me to be able to introduce uh, Talk To Me in Korean um, to, I guess, a different kind of audience. 
All right, uh, let me quickly, I'm scrolling through the comments. Please keep your comments coming. 안녕하세요, 안녕하세요. Oh, here. Uh, this is not a question, but I would like to talk about this. Over here. 그 다음에... Okay. Hmm. All right, so these are the com comments that I want to address before going to the book content. So, can you please tell us how to reply to thank you more naturally? You can say 아니에요. 아니에요 is like something that will always, almost always work. Um, I was actually not showing you the comments, right? Just like that, you have to let me know. Um, 아니에요 is, it's not, literally translated, but you can say 아니에요 whenever somebody says 고마워요, 감사합니다, you can say 아니에요. There are some other phrases that some other textbooks, older textbooks will teach you, older classes or materials will teach you, but 아니에요 is going to be the best response, the safest response. And then um, this one, 송이 송, 현우님, 참 좋아서 또 돌아온 거 기쁜데요. 어, 기쁜데요. 한국어 잘 설명하셔서 감사합니다. Ing. Lots of ings at the end. And you can um, give the ego vibe, uh, cuteness, uh, affectionate vibe by ending your sentences with so and so, 감사합니다. So and so, and yung, like that. If you overuse it, it'll sound like you are, I don't know, being too playful, but at the same time, you can sometimes use it. And Songi Song also wrote, 선생님 is a set word, you can't use it without nim. Well, in fact, you can in certain situations. So, 선생 is the job title, like, for example, 한국어 선생, 영어 선생, 수학 선생. So, official or technically, in principle, if you want to identify yourself as a teacher, um, they say, in principle, you cannot call yourself a 선생님 because nim is an honorific suffix that you add after somebody's name or somebody's job title or a social title. So you need to say, in principle, you need to say that uh, you are a 영어 선생. 저는 영어 선생이에요. 저는 수학 선생이에요. You need to say it like that. That's the, that's the rule. But in real life, most people will probably feel a little bit awkward saying the word 선생 without the nim at the end. So people actually do say 선생님. So I also, um, as a professional Korean teacher myself, I also just you know describe myself as 한국어 선생님, even though I know that in principle, the nim should be left out. Okay? All right. And yeah, let's... Go back to the dialogue. So please pay close attention to all the words and expressions because you might find something that you didn't know that will be very, very useful for you in the future. So, Chersu, Chersu is the name of the guy. Okay, so you can feel that this is going to be a story that you can follow, just like you know when you're watching a movie or a drama, when you are immersed in the conversation, you can pay more attention, you can remember and retain the same information longer and better. So here's the story. Chersu is a guy, 엄마 means mother, and Younghee, Younghee is um, probably his older sister because um, she, Younghee says, 제 깨워주지마, 제. She's referring to Chersu as and then Chersu says, Nuna. Nuna is older sister for a guy. So we have an, a younger brother, older sister, and the mother. 엄마, 저 내일 6시에 깨워주세요. 엄마, 저 내일 6시에 깨워주세요. 깨우다. 깨우다 is to wake up somebody. 깨워주세요 is please wake me up. 엄마, 저 내일, I'm looking at this part over here. You can see everything, right? 엄마, 저. You, I don't think you can see my cursor though, right? You, you can only see, you have to look at the first line. 6시에, at 6 o'clock, 깨워주세요. 엄마 says, 
Um, 6시? 아침 6시? 6 o'clock? You mean 6 o'clock in the morning? Probably the boy, the guy, doesn't wake up that early in the morning usually, so mom is surprised. 아, 6시? 아침 6시? 네. 엄마, 제 깨워주지 마. Mom, don't wake him up. 제 100번 깨워도 못 일어나. 야, 김철수, 너 알람 맞춰놓고 자. 엄마 귀찮게 하지 말고. So, 엄마, 제 깨워주지 마. Over here, you see, 엄마, 제 깨워주지 마. So, here, what's interesting is the son is using 존댓말, 깨워주세요. And the daughter is using 반말, casual language to mom. Um, it's often like that. It's, it's often mixed. I talk to my parents in 존댓말 just 100% of the time. And my sisters, they talk to them, I think, in 반말 casual language. They don't use like 존댓말 all the time. So it's okay. It's a mix. Um, everybody's different. So 엄마, 제 깨워주지 마. 제 is when you want to say, when you want to address somebody, him or her, in casual language. Okay? All right, and then 제 100번 깨워도 못 일어나. Even if you try to wake him up a hundred times, he can't wake up. And 야, 김철수. Do you see that part? 자, 김철수. I also heard that this is common in other languages too. Um, when you are using the person's first name normally, that's like for usual situations, but then you are upset with that person, you're frustrated with that person, you're angry at your child, you will use their full name. And it's the same in Korean. Like, mom will say, 철수, 철수야. 철수야. And then 철수 doesn't answer. And then the mother will say, 김철수. And then the, the son will know that mother means business. Mom is serious when the last name or the family name is used. Okay. Um, 너 알람 맞춰 놓고 자. You have to 알람 맞추다. Set the alarm. 엄마 귀찮게 하지 말고. Don't bother mommy. 귀찮다. 귀찮게 하지 마. 귀찮게 하다 is to uh, give somebody um, some bothersome tasks. Oh, it's the same in Arabic? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's universal in other languages too. All right, I have a question over here. To whom can we use the word 제? So 제 is written like that, 제, but it's almost always pronounced like 제 with a strong double 지읒. So 제. And 제 is whoever, you can use it to, or about whoever you can use 반말 with, like you cannot use it to your boss, about your boss. It has to be somebody that you are on Panmar speaking terms uh, with. And I can say, 제, that guy, that, that class, classmate of mine, or whoever you, you speak Panmar about, you can say, 제, that guy, that girl over there. So in this case, um, Younghee, the older sister, could have used, 엄마, 철수 깨워주지마, don't wake 철수 up. For him, um, you can just, she can just say 제. Alright, and then, uh, 철수 says, 아, 아니야. 아, 아니야. 아니야 is in 반말, so he's saying that to his older sister. 이번엔 진짜 일어날 수 있어. I can, or 이번엔, this time, I can really wake up. 이번엔 진짜 일어날 수 있어. 엄마, 꼭 깨워주세요. Mom. 꼭, 꼭, a very important word. 꼭 is definitely for sure. So when you are promising to do something, you can say 꼭 할게요. 오늘 꼭 공부 할게요. I will definitely make sure to study today. 꼭 숙제 할게요. Talk to me in Korean. 꼭 구독 할게요. 꼭, right? And then you can also ask somebody else to please make sure to do something. 꼭 와야 돼요. You must come, okay? 꼭 봐야 돼요. You must watch it. Okay? Mom says, you know, mothers being mothers. 알았어, 알았어, 알았어. Got it. Okay, okay, okay. 알았어. Younghee is frustrated. 아, 엄마, 그냥 알람 맞추라고 해. Mom, just tell him to set the alarm. 
And then Cheolsu says, Aduna, 진짜 왜 그래? What's what's wrong with you? Why are you like that? And then mom is also frustrated at both of them. 둘다 조용히 해. 둘다 조용히 해. In this case, 둘다 조용히 해. So this is the sentence that you see in the book. 둘다 조용히 해. But you can also say 조용히 들 해. So 들 is a pluralizer for mostly nouns, but you can actually, surprisingly, you can add it to the back of an adverb as well. If you are talking to or talking about uh, plural people. So 조용히 들 해. And then 둘다 조용히 해. Both of you, you know, be quiet. 딱 6시에 깨우면 돼. Turning to Chersu, mother says, uh, so I have to wake you up. I just have to wake you up at exactly six o'clock. Tak, tak. Tak is exactly, or it can describe the sound that something makes. Tak, 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 tak. By the way, this is um, some hot milk tea that Kyungun bought for me as I was preparing for this live class. Thank you, Kyungun. She told me to go 말하라고 했어요. She told me to go. Uh, to mention it here. Yep, that was me being forced to thank her on air. And 그 다음에 그때처럼 어, 네, 딱 6시요. Exactly at 6 o'clock. 그때처럼 또 5시 반인데 Let me type that for you. 그때처럼 또 5시 반인데 6시라고 깨우면 안 돼요. So here, 그때처럼, like that time. So he's referring to another time before. 그때처럼, like last time. 또, again, 5시 반인데, it's uh, 5.30, but 6시라고 saying that it's 6 o'clock. 깨우면, if you wake me up saying that it's 6 o'clock, you know, mothers usually do that to make sure that your, you know, their child gets up. Hey, it's 3, 3 o'clock. You need to go. And then, the child hurries up for something, and then it's actually 2.40. So, 깨우면 안 돼요. 그때처럼 또 5시 반인데 6시라고 깨우면 안 돼요. You can't wake me up at 5.30 like last time saying that it's 6 o'clock. 너 깨워도 잘못 일어나니까 그렇지. I did that because you can't wake up if I wake you up. 근데 왜 이렇게 일찍 일어나려고? Then why are you going to wake up this early or that early? 아침 6시에 일어나서 뭐 하게? 아침 6시에 일어나서 뭐 하게? So this might be a new kind of ending or phrase for many people. 아침 6시에 at 6 in the morning 일어나서 you wake up and 뭐 하게? What are you going to do? So 거기 가서 뭐 하게? What are you going to do? But after going there, why are you going there? So, you know, so and so, so, 뭐하게 is often uh, a way to say why. So, 그거 사서 뭐하게? Why are you buying that? Uh, 뭐하게? 여기 들어가서 뭐하게? Why are you going in there? So, literally translated, it will mean you go in there for what purpose, right? So, 뭐하게? And then, 아, 저, 아, 내일 저 친구들이랑 놀러 가기로 했어요. Tomorrow, 놀러 가기. Going to hang out somewhere. Now on phone. 로 했어요. We have decided to go. I, I have decided to go on a trip with my friends. 어디로? To where? So that was the first page, first dialogue. And this is how it goes. And then you have these three pages. I'm going to go over everything. But before we do, let me quickly answer some of your questions here. Okay, so I see a question. I, I'm not sure where it is right now, but I see a question about 제. So, yeah, 제 is actually short for 저 아이. 예 is 이 아이. So, 아이 is child, kid, and it's the same as a, um, yeah, I, 어린애, 어린아이, 어린애, like that. So it's shortened. So that's a, 
So when you look at it, Chao Ai, that kid, even though, even if you are also a kid yourself, you can say Chao Ai, saying that boy, that girl, and Chao Ai, Chao E, and try saying Chao E three times as fast. Chao E, Chao E, Chao E, Chao E, Chao E, Chao E. So it becomes Che. And Yi E, Ye. And Ye is used so commonly for this guy, this dude, this girl. Um, to, to mean th those things. And also, as small children, we often point at other people and tell on people, like, oh, he, he, did, he started the fight first. She pulled on my hair first or something like that. And then you say, 얘가 그랬어요. 얘가 먼저 했어요. 얘가 먼저 했어요. 얘가 먼저 그랬어요. So often, this is uh, classic lines that kids use to tell on other people. All right. And Kitty, wow, thank you. You've bought 13 of our books. Thank you, I appreciate it. And I am sure that the books are going to help you a lot. And Sana Begum, I missed your question. Please write it again. I have misplaced it. And so, Again, where we are right now is we have completed looking at the first page. We're going to answer some questions and then go back to the dialogue and read page two and three. So what's the difference between 특히 and 특별히? Oh, um, 특 and 별, 특별, 특별하다 is to be special. 특별히 is specially. So you can make uh, present, 특별히 준비했어요. 특별히 준비한 선, uh, 준비한 준비? <laughs> 준비한 선물. 선물 is a present. 특별히 준비한 선물. You have specially prepared with special care. That's uh, 특별히. 특히 is specifically or especially. See, it's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit different, right? 특별, 특히. So you are um, listing some maybe examples and especially this one is like that. You can't say 특별히. You have to say 특히 in specific. And then, hmm, okay, over here, I see another question. And can you, can you say the name of the person and add nim instead of she? We're gonna actually, um, I'm, writing a video about this one, uh, actually, she and nim. Yes, you can add nim, and yes, you can add she after somebody's name, but if you want to sound more polite, more formal, you want to go with nim. She is, you know, it's formal, but still a little bit more casual than nim. So you can say, um, so and so she, if, especially if that person is younger than you, and if you are, if you want to stay safe, you know, choose the safe option, go with NIM. Um, okay. 그리고, aha, 한국어 책 대화와 실생활 대화가 소리가 같은가요? 왜냐하면 같지 않다는 말을 많이 들어서. Good question. So, um, 한국어 책 대화, Korean books, dialogues, 실생활 대화, real life conversations, 소리가 같은가요? Do they sound the same? 왜냐하면 같지 않다는 말을 많이 들어서. So you've heard that, you know, from other, from many people that they, the conversations in the books and the conversations that Korean people actually have are not the same. It depends on the book, and our books, I, I believe, uh, we design the books in a way that everything's very natural, very um, colloquially appropriate, without sounding too casual. So. Yeah, you can you can trust our books. Some, for example, some beginner chapters are deliberately designed, deliberately simplified, oversimplified sometimes, so that beginner learners learners don't have to worry about like too many too many additional things. So some like early beginner chapters are going to be simplified dialogues, but later on, as you move over to like level three, four, you will see short but very natural sentences, natural dialogues. And even if the books that you picked up, it doesn't have to be our books only, but even if the books that you are studying with do give you some 
slightly unnatural sounding, say, uh, dialogues or conversations, it's okay to use them as a learner. I'm sure the phrases, the stuff that I'm saying in English, you know, partially sounds a little bit different from what a native speaker would say, right? So our goal as a language learner, as non-native speakers, is not to sound exactly the same as native speakers. Our goal is to be able to express our thoughts freely without too much trouble and understand whatever is being said to us. So it's okay. All right. I hope I'm not missing too many important questions. All right. 그리고 All right. So here. <laughs> this is a good one. Here. Okay. Over here. Three comments in a row. Maria, hi. Um, could you please explain this new rule to add till to adverbs? Um, I will prepare a separate video on this because this is something that is going to be very interesting for many learners. But you can basically add till to adverbs if you are addressing a group of people. So, 빨리 와. Come here quickly, right? You can say 빨리 들 와. You guys, come here quickly. Something like that. I know it doesn't work in English, but 빨리 들어와. 그 다음에 음, 조심히 가세요. 조심히 가. 조심히 가. Let's say you are sticking to 반말. Let's say you are saying, you know, take care or see you, but 조심히 가. 조심히 is carefully. 가. Go carefully. Like it's a goodbye phrase, right? And 조심히. So friend A is leaving in this direction, friend B, everybody gathered at your house for a little party and then you're separating. And then you're imagining everyone going their own different paths carefully. You can say 조심히들 가, 조심히들 가. And then your friends are studying. 열심히, 공부, 공부 열심히 해. You want to say study hard. And you can say 조, 공부 열심히 들 해. 공부 열심히 들 해. You guys study hard. So you could add 너네들, 얘들아, using the word 예 earlier. Like, hey, you guys, 얘들, 얘들아, 공부 열심히 해. You can say that, but you can just simply attach 들 at the end of 열심히. Study hard, you know, the word for hard. And it serves the same purpose. Okay? And then the next one, I noticed that the word para in a song lyric, 빛나길 para, is pronounced as 빛나길 바래. Why is it spelled and pronounced differently? It's one of those words that are still um, different between written and spoken Korean. Um, I can tell you with confidence that 99% um, of all Korean native speakers, they say 바래. And people are desperately hoping for the academy or the whoever decides the standard rules to change this because recently we saw in less less than 10 years ago 너무 is too or excessively uh, in the dictionary it was like that 너무 so but people said 너무 좋아요 all the time to mean it's really good so 너무 used to only mean excessively too much but in colloquialism, it was like used all the time as very, in a good way. Um, when you say excessively, it's always negative. But they decided that, um, okay, fine. Everybody's using nomu in positive contexts. So it's going to be good. It's good. It's, you can use it. It's standard now. So it has changed. Para didn't change yet. So uh, parada is the diction parada, to hope for, to wish for. To wish, 빛나다 is to shine. 빛나길 바라 is what you would see in a written lyric. I hope you shine. I hope it shines. 빛나길 바래 is what everybody says in spoken Korean. And Christy26, hello, finally, I saw you live. Thank you for joining us live, finally. All right, thank you for your um, questions and comments. I'll be back. And then here, let's look at 
the next page over here. This page is a translation, so I'll skip this part and then, okay, th this is actually not three pages, it's uh, two pages. So mom asked, where are you gonna go at six or after waking up at six in the morning? Chelsu says, 설악산이요, 설악산, um, Mount 설악. There is another mountain that's by the similar by a similar name, 수락산. 수락산. It's actually close, very close to it's in Seoul. In Seoul, 수락산. If you look it up, 수락산. And I remember going to 수락산 with a bunch of my college classmates uh, 20 years ago, and then I got a phone call from someone, and I said I'm in 수락산, and they were surprised because I was like in the morning I was in the in downtown Seoul, and then I was all all of a sudden. In their head, I was in Seoraksan. Seoraksan is far away, so it's one of the highest mountains in Korea. So Seoraksan, Seoraksan, Mount Seorak. 엄마 says, mother says, 이 추운 날, on this cold day, 설악산에 왜 가? Why would you go to Mount Seorak on a cold day like this? Seolsu says, um, 그냥 just. 등산하러 가요. 그냥 등산하러 가요. So 등산 is climbing a mountain, but it's not like rock climbing, it's just hiking in the mountains. 등산하러 in order to 가요. 그냥 등산하러 가요. 그냥 공부하러 가요. 그냥 데이트하러 가요. You can say, you know, 하러 like that. Uh, and then, you know, the mom knows her son really well. 동네 뒷산도 잘못 오르면서 설악산이 어디라고 가? 이 추위에. So let me just type that over here and then break it down for you. It's a very interesting um, sentence. So this sentence is interesting in many ways. And one reason it is interesting is that um, over here, the sentence order, word order is flipped. So, 어디라고 가? The mother didn't finish her sentence here like that, but instead, 이 추위에 was added at the end. So, maybe she wanted to add, emphasize it, but maybe she, she thought of this cold weather, you know, as an afterthought. 이 추위에, in this cold weather, 이 추위에, in this cold weather, 동네, neighborhood, 뒤 is behind, 산 is mountain, 뒷산, 뒷산. You have that 사이 시옷 over there, the 시옷 in between. Two words are there, and then sometimes you see this extra 시옷 uh, added to the first word in a compound word, the first element, and that is there um, when, for example, 뒤 is behind, 산 is mountain, but when you actually say it, people say it as 뒷산, not 뒤산. So it's affected by the pronunciation, right? Not not tisan, but tisan. So when Korean native speakers, when they say uh, the word with a double sound or with an extra sound for a compound word, they actually add back uh, to make sure that people who are reading it knows that it's going to be tisan, not tisan. Tisan sounds like some kind of a French name, I guess, Dusan, yeah, something like that. But anyway, Dusan. You you can't even 잘 do uh, is even in this case. 잘 well can't. 오르다 is to go up. You can't even climb up the neighborhood back hill or the the little mountain over there. 설악산. You can't even climb that one. That little hill, 설악산이 어디라고 가? This is also a very cool phrase to know. 설악산이 어디라고 가? 어디 is where. 어디라고 means like saying it is where. 가. You're going saying that 설악산 is what kind of place. So all together, it means you can't even climb that little hill over there, you know, behind our neighborhood. Where do you think you're going? Where do you think Sorak or what kind of mountain do you think you uh, do you think Sorak is? 
to go there in this cold weather. So that's typical mother comment. You're like, hey, you can't even do that. Um, knowing the son. 아니에요. 할수 있어요. No, I can do it. Um, and 엄마 says, no, 그 같은 과, your same department, 아름인가 하는 애. 아름인가 하는 애. So, 아름. 아름 is somebody's name here, over here. Um, 아름인가 하는 애. 아름인가 뭔가 하는 애. So, her, she's not sure about her name. 아름인가 하는 애. The, the girl, what's her name? 아름. Or something, right? And then, 애가 간다고 해서, she's saying that she's going there. 가려고 하는 거지? You're going there too, right? And 철수 says, 아, 아, 아니에요. 그냥 등산하고 싶어서 가는 거예요. I'm going there just because I want to go, you know, walk or hike in the mountains. 어쨌든, anyway, 내일 꼭 깨워주세요. Please wake me up for sure tomorrow. So that was the dialogue. And we have, right after that, we see the translation. And then in the book, you will see the vocabulary list. 내일 친구들 깨워주다, 놀러 가다, 아침 춥다. 제, that person, casual. So 등산하다, 조용히, 깨우다, 어쨌든, anyway, right? So you can study with that. And what's also going to be useful if you study with this book is you can see these sentence patterns that are found in the book. 제 깨워주지 마 was what the sister, uh, older sister said to mommy. 제 깨워주지 마, don't wake him up. And then you can see other sample sentences. 이거 먹지 마, don't eat this. 가지 마, don't go. You can also see exercises using this prompt sentence, you want to translate this into Korean. Let's do the second one. Don't be late tomorrow. 내일 늦지 마. Okay. And then another uh, pattern here. 꼭, I introduced 꼭, right? Make sure you do something. Please do this for sure. 꼭 깨워주세요. Please wake, make sure to wake me up. 꼭 와주세요. Please uh, be sure to come. And then you have another exercise. Go. And then applied patterns. You can tweak the ending a little further and say, Go. 해주셔야 돼요. 해주셔야 해요. 꼭 해주세요. 꼭 깨워줘요. Okay. And then another pattern. 음연패. I just have to do this. So, yeah. This is the structure of the book. I hope you enjoyed the little dialogue. This dialogue is very uh, natural, something that could actually happen as a conversation between a mom and a son and a daughter. Wake me up! And then the Luna is like, don't do that. Mommy, she's not gonna wake up. And then mom is like seeing through him. So you don't want to really like climb or hike in the mountain just for the sake of it. You want to go there because there's a girl that you like. Okay, already 50 minutes have passed. Thank you for joining and thank you for studying with me. I hope everything was good so far. So far, so good, everyone. All right, so some questions before we wrap up. I always enjoy getting questions from you and being able to answer as many of them as possible. And where can you get the book? You can get the book by clicking on the description's link and you can go to our website and see everything. All right, and... Okay. Another question over here. I'm going to basically highlight is, um, so maybe seven, eight questions. All right, two questions in a row. And Liliana, thank you so much for the super chat comment. Um, your video is very inspiring, nice voice. Thank you so much. 감사합니다. 네, 목소리 칭찬해 주셔서 감사합니다. 
Okay, and here's another co comment. Please keep your questions coming. Do we have lessons in Thai? We don't have lessons in Thai, but we have everything in English. And we are actually adding, starting with our recent videos, we're starting to add our um, more subtitles to our videos. So English subtitles will almost always be there. So you can use the auto-generated other language titles, subtitles, so that you can um, use those subtitles for reference. Hmm. Okay. Do. Oops. Over here. 그 다음에 another one. All right. So far, I have about six, seven questions. Um, 이루어지다, 이루어내다. All right, Sam. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with this title or expression, Sam is from 선생님. So 선생님, 선생님 is a teacher. 선 is before, earlier, 생 is born. So somebody who was born before you, who has probably more experience than you, that's the word origin. And 님 is like honorific, polite. So 선생님 is a teacher. 선생님, 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 if you say that quickly, it becomes Sam and it's only used casually. Um, you can definitely call me Sam or 현우 Sam here in a casual, laid-back, YouTube live kind of setting. 이루어지다, 이루다, 우리다, 이루다 is to accomplish, 이루다. 목표를 이루다, to accomplish a goal. 목표를 이루었어요. 목표를 이룰 거예요. You, you're gonna accomplish your goals. Um, 이루어, 이루어, 지다 is um, the passive voice. 이루어지다, to get accomplished. 이루어내다, 이루어내다 is um, you, you do something, you accomplish the act of accomplishing. So, 내다, this, this is an auxiliary verb that also means to accomplish the, the act. So, 해내다, um, you successfully do something. So, 이루어내다 means to successfully accomplish. So, you can just stick to 이루다, too, if you want to keep it simple. And in Korean, should we focus on vocabulary or on grammar? You should do both. But I would say if you, um, yeah, you need to decide for yourself mostly, but if you don't want to spend too much time like memorizing or trying to memorize a lot of vocabulary, I think it's a good idea to just follow our grammar lessons from level one all the way to maybe, maybe go to level two or three at least without worrying too much about learning more vocabulary. Once you have a good understanding of the basic, essential, beginner level vocabulary, or grammar, I should say, you will find yourself being able to learn more vocabulary faster. So yeah, stick with our essential curriculum from level one through level three. Um, 좋다, 좋아하다, the difference is um, 좋다 is 저 이거 좋아요. You can say it like that without any particles, but it can also mean um, something is good or that you like something. So you can say about a person, uh, 저는, so say, uh, I'm just going to use my name as an example, 현우 씨가 좋아요, like, and it means I like 현우. But if you want to say um, as an active Emotion or the act of liking somebody or being fond of somebody, you can say, 현우 씨를 좋아해요. That's only one way. 좋다 is two ways. Something is good or therefore you like it. 좋아해요 is I like it. That's the only meaning. And Amruth says, I'm having a lot of confusion in the usage of words which mean a lot similar, for example. Uh, 너무, 아주, 많이, 엄청, 완전. Uh, the last one was 완전. They all seem the same. 
They, how are they different from each other? Mm, I would say, I could give you some sample sentences, but I, I would say instead of 엄청 um, or 완전, you can use 너무, 아주, 많이, um, very safely, no matter what kind of setting you are in. So 엄청 and 완전 sound more casual than like other ones in most cases. So just use them interchangeably, just, you know, taking turns. And 엄청, 완전, maybe try not to use these um, in formal settings. That's the only thing I can give you right now. They're all similar, in my opinion. And Mary says, I just finished book level three and noticed the difference in the dialogues. Um, it's getting more interesting as we advance, and I love it. Thank you. Thank you. I love that you love it. Rebecca, you bought 19 books. They are very useful. When I study Korean with friends and I, we have a question, I grab one of them to find the answer. That's amazing. And you can also join our live sessions like this or come to our Twitter and ask me questions. That's where I answer most of the questions that we get. 그 다음에 Hope World says, 선생님, 저는 한국어 말잘 이해할 수 있어요. I can understand Korean, spoken Korean. 근데요, 이야기할 때 모든 것을 잊어버려요. 저는 어떡해요? <laughs> Let me um, rewrite that because there are like really like very minor, very, very minor small typos. 저는, for, this is for other learners. 한국어, 한국어를 잘 이해할 수 있어요. 근데요, 이야기할 때는 모든 것을 잊어버려요. 저 어떡해요? Mm. Well, don't worry. I think you just have to practice more. Over here, in there. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry. It's, it's very natural that you, you forget. And I'm also, I also experience the same thing with other languages. I understand much more than I can speak. So it's the same thing. As learners, we always go through the same thing. 자, 그리고 Oh, uh, Rohit, thank you for the super chat comment. And this one, I'm not sure about the meaning of the question, but to, to take a guess is, are the words nun and un, are they compulsory to pronounce to talk to others? They're not compulsory to pronounce. Um, you can with all Korean particles, you can omit them if the meaning is clear without using them. So that's my answer. Um, okay, let, let me go over. We're almost out of time, but let me answer just a couple more questions before I have to go, okay? Is it possible to learn German, uh, learn Korean as a German? Yes, I think so. You can definitely learn Korean as a German person. Mm. There's no reason that it's going to be more difficult for you. All right. Okay. So. This is going to be the last comments that I'm going to address. So if you have other questions, I'm sorry, please come back for the next live session or ask me on Twitter at TTMRK. Um, 선생님, 오히려에 대한 문장 어떻게 잘 이용하는지 이해시켜 주세요. 오히려, on the contrary. Contrary. 오히려 is um, when you have an undesirable situation, 별로 마음에 들지 않는 상황이에요. It's a situation that you don't really like, but you can say, you know, put on your positive thinking hat and say, 오히려, on the contrary, it might be good. 오히려, 좋을 수도 있어요. 오히려, 잘된 거예요. 오히려, so on the contrary is the meaning, 오히려. Um, 그리고 you, you thought you had learned French before and learning French was difficult. So you think Korean is going to be more difficult, but then you realize that 
오히려 한국어가 더 쉬워요. On the contrary, different from what I had thought, Korean is actually easier. That's how you can use 오히려. 부모님에 대한 이야기 할때 이가 더 자주 써요? 아니면 깨서 자주 써요? Um, I say, uh, bu- when I say the term 부모님, parents, my parents, 부모님, the word itself is already formal. So 부모님께서, I would have to just decide, depending on the person that I'm talking to, but 부모님께서, so if it's a formal setting, I would say 부모님께서 이렇게 말씀하셨습니다. I would say the honorific 시 here and there. But when I'm talking to my co-workers who are, uh, you know, younger than me, they, I would say 저희 엄마가, 저희 아빠가, I don't say 깨서, right? That's my answer. And do you have an advice for sight reading faster? The only thing that I can say is you have to read a lot more. Just like exercising, you have to do more of it to get better at it. There's no other tactics or anything like that that I can mention right now. And TZ Vibo says, um, does this make sense? 호주 서부에는 산이 없어요. 산을 너무 산에 산을 너무 보고 싶어요. Or you can say 산에 산에 너무 가 보고 싶어요. You can say 가 보고 싶어요 too because you are saying that in west part in the west part of Australia there are not mountains so you you can't like you can say 가고 싶어요 but it will mean it will sound like there are mountains to go to but 가 보고 means I want to experience going to a mountain. Okay, so thank you so much for your comments. Um, and yeah, please do consider visiting. I want you to do three things. Visiting our website at talktomeinkorean.com. Come to our Twitter at TTMIK. And click on the join button to consider joining our membership where we will be posting. So we, we've been kind of quiet over the past two to three months, but we will also post more on our YouTube channel for members um, starting from yesterday, actually. So you can expect to see more content there. And that's it for today. This live class will be recorded and saved for later um, reviews. So please, if you're watching the recording and have watched until this point, thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for staying with me. 감사합니다. Have a wonderful day. And yep, I will see you next time. 감사합니다. Bye bye.